Attention today is focused on this structure. It's called the Sports Hall. And in Zagreb, have gathered the world's greatest gymnasts. Right now on the floor, the top women gymnasts in the world are warming up as we prepare for a competition. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Al Michaels. And here in Zagreb today, we'll be taking a look at the world's greatest gymnasts. And coming up shortly will be competition in the women's all around. Now, let's put this meet in perspective. The world championships are held every two years. They were held last year in Moscow. Next year, they'll be held in Budapest, Hungary. There are no world championships this year. So this then becomes the most important international competition of 1982. And we should get a pretty good reading as to what we might expect in the Los Angeles Olympics, which are less than two years away. Joining me for the women's all around our longtime expert commentator Gordon Mannix and uh, briefly Gordon what is the state of women's gymnastics in late 1982 well Alan this meet since they had to qualify through the world championships what we have here is probably the finest array of female gymnastics talent I've ever seen Tracy Talavera qualified to be here but is not here because of some nagging injuries the US did bring two fine athletes Michelle Goodwin is here and is looking strong and along with her is America's premier female gymnast, Julianne McNamara, who won a bronze medal on the bars last year in Moscow. But last year, Al, in the World Championships, little Russian Olga Bicharova won the World All-Around Championship and yet qualified for the finals in only one other event. Now, many people feel that several of her own teammates and, of course, Maxi Gunnell from East Germany might rate as better athletes. Well, since this is the first competition since that World Championship, gives us a chance to find out whether or not little Olga Bicharova is for real. Got to be excited. She'll have her hands full today with this competitor, Maxi Ganak of East Germany. Let's point out a difference here between the World Cup and the World Championships. In the World Championships, there is a compulsory round, and you are given a score in that round, and that counts as half of your all-around total. Now, there is no such compulsory round in World Cup competition. Maxi Ganauk won three individual titles last year in Russia. She won the vault, she won the uneven bars, and she won the beam as she gets set to mount the uneven bars here, Gordon. But you know, Al, in Moscow, she had a serious injury on one of her ankles, and it appears that she's had surgery, probably Achilles tendon surgery. And the big variable in this competition is whether or not that surgery is recovered enough to give her a real run at the all-around championship. I think maybe she might be ready. Ganak is 18 years old, so she's approaching her prime. She's 5 feet 1 and 89 pounds. All right, now you straddle over the low bar, kip up. And she gets right into it. Nice handstand. Hip circle handstand. Giant swing into a del chip. Another somersault. Stummy quip, now watch. That's a Veronin over the low bar. A heck vault that's been known only to high bar until she introduced it. Now she'll get set up for a dismount. That's a big move there. I think she looks pretty good in this event. Very promising beginning for Maxi Gunauf of East Germany in her quest to win the gold at the World Cup. Here it is, 9.9 .9 for Maxi Gunauf. Now the all-around champion, Olga Bicharova, getting her day started on the vault. Just shy of her 16th birthday. She's 4 feet 8, 69 pounds. And what an opening for a big day for her. She feels the same thing we talked about in the scene set, I'm sure. She's got to prove it again. Front handspring, front with a half twist. Good ball. Nice little hop at the end there, but it's not a major deduction. Olga Bicharova, who won it all last year on her home turf in Moscow. Well, let's take another look at it. She gets a good spring in the horse. Great hand plant pushes off. Perfect form in the air. Overturns it there just slightly, which accounts for that one small jump. Now, if she does well in this competition, Al, look out for her in Los Angeles. Her score is a 9.85. And keep in mind, the only thing that matters in all-around competition is the cumulative score. One bad event can kill you. Now you're looking at Natalia Yurchenko of the Soviet Union, the 1982 national champion. There are some who feel she did not properly qualify for this meet, and we'll get into that issue later on. But Al Natalia is one of the most poised performers I have ever seen. She starts off very strongly with a back straddle and then goes. Two big release moves in a row. But 
Maddox's law. Hits the two big release moves and misses a simple kip. I guess that's what the experience is all about, Al. Giant swing. And a double full twisting flyaway. And that's about as good a twister as you'll see. That one break, though, will cost her what? In this case, probably not a lot. If she, she didn't miss the move. She came up low. It'll cost her a tenth or a tenth and a half. And a 9.8 is the score for Natalia Yurchenko on the uneven bar. Not great, Al, but it's going to keep her in the hunt. Next up on the uneven bars, Julianne McNamara of the United States, and Gordy spoke with her earlier. Now, as we sit and look at you here, we see this really sweet, sort of a cherubic face, and uh, a beautiful young lady. But in the gym, you're, you're something else. You're a fierce competitor. Tell me about that. Well, in a competition, mainly I just compete against myself, just try to do the best I can. I think for any athlete, really, your motivation has to come from yourself because you're doing all the work, and if you're not doing it for yourself, then you can't really put as much into it. Now Julianne in action. She was the American Cup all-around champion earlier this year and won the bronze medal in this event at last year's World Championships. That's correct, and boy, she has to start out uh, with a real dynamite beginning. Watch this, she'll jump and go right to a handstand pirouette. Good start, giant swing. Now here's a hop into an eagle, back into a staller shoot on the low bar. Good combination, exactly the kind of thing she needs. Now a little flat there, but she saved it very well. Reverse grip, there's a staller swing again. Down to a front summit catch, oh, what a shame. She was like a millimeter too far from the bar. You know what hurts, Al, is that she not only will not win the all-around now, but she won't qualify for the finals in this event. Well, you heard the crowd applauding, and uh, they certainly weren't applauding derisively toward Julianne. There was activity going on on one of the other pieces of apparatus. And that was the reason for the applause. It just happened to coincide with Julianne falling down at that particular moment. And Al, she doesn't have time to set her hands for the catch because this move is too early, takes her back instead of up, and really causes a tragedy for Julianne. That break cost her half a point, and that's the difference. She winds up with a 9.45 on the uneven bars. It moves. And world looking pretty good. Standings, Maxi Ganak leading after the first rotation, Olga Bicharova second, Yurchenko and Agaki are tied for third as we pick up Maxi Ganak's routine on the balance beam. Ganak in first place, scoring a 9.9 .9 on her first routine on the uneven bars. Well, Al, she came into the competition terrified of this event. There she does a back handspring into a major miss. Her mount was a back handspring onto the beam, and she hit it about one out of ten in the warm-up, so she's had a problem. Now here comes a forward roll with no hands. Not an easy move. Slight bobble on that one even. She'll do a pirouette. Again, just not quite under control. Actually, going out, not having the kind of competition I don't believe she looked for on the balance beam, although something about her routine has had her deeply concerned. Could go back to the injury we alluded to earlier, the Achilles tendon thing. Now, here comes a double full twister off. Not a bad ending, but certainly not a strong routine out. Well, she had that one major break that will have to cost her a couple of tenths at least as we await the judge's ruling.